All right. You're on mute, Ian, just so you know. Cannot hear you. How about that? Hey, there you go. All right. Good. All right. John, you're at 7.03 uh, if you want to call it to order. Right. Good evening. Uh, this will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood Community Service District Park and Recreation Commission. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by utilizing the web link or dial-in information printed on this agenda. At points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. Uh, now we bring the meeting to order. The first item is our agenda. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, any editor revisions from the commission? Then hearing none, uh, the agenda is adopted as presented. Uh, moving on to item number two. This is uh, seeking public comment on any non-agenda items. Looking for public comment, John, and I have none. No public comment. All right, we'll move to item number three. This is the uh, review of our draft minutes of our September 28th, 2021 commission meeting. Uh, this will have uh, our approval. Any comments from commissioners? I don't know if I can hear Ian or not. There? He's, he's muted, but I would assume uh, no news is good news. Got okay, you, we're good Thank to you. go. Then I would uh, ask for a motion no. to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Yeah, I can second. All right. Uh, motion by Campo, second by Fine. Uh, all in favor? Do you need to ask? I'm sorry. And the motion carries. John, you need to ask for public comment on that. I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Uh, any public comment on our uh, draft minutes of the September 28th commission meeting? Looking for any hands raised and I don't see any. Thank you, John. My apologies. So now we'll move on to item number four. This is the draft minutes of the October 12th, 2021 board meeting. This is for our review. Any comments from commissioners? Eric, I'm, I saw um, your comment about the trail feasibility um, and you're reaching out to Tim Bass for a proposal. Is there, I don't know if there's anything else to add on that. Yeah, I was going to just give you guys a uh, update. Tim, uh, I, during the items of interest, um, just for informational purposes, I actually just uh, signed and submitted or returned a proposal from Tim Best uh, today. Um, he was able to get back to me with timing and expects to be able to have all of the work done, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, kind of mid to late November was his anticipated timing, which sounds about right. He's going to come out and do a field visit and a lot of other uh, uh, kind of research on the area. So um, we are moving forward with that now. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah you. you know, one of the things that uh, I got, on, I was on a call with him and I'm not sure if you're aware of this. I wasn't. He told me that that portion of Miller Creek was moved there and that it used to be in a different location altogether. I have no knowledge of that whatsoever. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that either. So it's interesting. I'm sure it'll be in his report. Yeah, no, that'll be, that is interesting. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, I know that there was a lot of work done when they put in those developments at Roundtree and uh, Casa Marinwood, just as you can see, but I don't know of, uh, I don't know of any of the uh, other history that they actually moved the creek bed or anything. I don't know where else it would have went in that area unless it ran right smack through the middle of where the townhouse developments I, are. I'm, I'm curious, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we'll find out. Yeah, good. All right. Well, interesting. Uh, All right, Eric, you, said, you said that the, um, oh, sorry, um, mid to late January is no, when? No, November. Mid November. to late November. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I'll update that at the board meeting as well, Lisa. I'll put that in my report just so we know when it's coming. He said he'll have the report by then? Yeah. You said mid-November. Yeah, mid to late November is what he said. Of this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, I know, that's why I thought, I was sure I heard him wrong. I thought I, I, thought uh, I heard January. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, no, to, I've harassed him quite a bit on deadlines. Uh, that, that You're going to have to pester him if you want it by mid-November. Well, I did tell him that uh, the couple things he was working on with you could go out and get pushed back. Uh, and that you wanted this to be the priority. <laughs> That's good. Good. I don't have any no idea if he's worked on anything with you or not, yeah. John. But I he's not. Anyway. He's not. <laughs> All right. Any other questions on the board minutes? Uh, none for me. Okay. Well, in uh, hearing none, I'd ask for any uh, public public comment on the board minutes from October 12th. No takers? I don't see any. No, you are good. Thank you. All right, then we'll move on to item number five. This is the Marinwood Play Park Structures Replacement Project. Uh, we're going to uh, review the draft community survey. Um, we had a staff report included in our agenda um, outlining how this has come about and this being our second review. And also we have a sample of the uh, questionnaire. be trying to connect through the regular link um so i'm gonna go ahead and move him over ian go ahead and drop your hand on there if that is you uh yeah perfect i'm gonna move him over uh looks like he got a better connection one second all right thanks yeah i don't know i ended up getting shifted over so thanks Appreciate it. no problem All right, sorry, John, if you wanted to go ahead, uh, and uh, I know Ian will probably want to take part in this the best he can. Looks like he's having some connectivity issues. Uh, I gave you just a little bit of a uh, uh, intro staff report in there, um, as well as uh, just a reminder on, you know, this project kind of came to life and uh, it's already gone through kind of uh, the initial approval processes as we keep moving forward with this project. Um, the survey is a result from prior meeting that was conducted earlier this year. Uh, thank you to Commissioner Fine, who uh, took a lot of the feedback and was able to refine it. Um, and I'm finally kind of able to get back to it. This is ultimately the survey that we want to push out uh, and advertise throughout the entire community to just try to gain some quantitative, uh, a little bit of qualitative data uh, to kind of help push direction on this project just in terms of uh, some of the place structure features. And stuff. Um, Ian, anything else you wanted to add in there? No, um, this and th you know, this is just as the survey appears in a word document or whatever, I think it would be on survey monkey. I think Eric said that the um, district has its own survey monkey account. Um, and I looked and I think I found it's pretty easy to cre create like a, like a QR code that we could do or whatever. So we could, you know, post a little sign near the playground and email the link out to various, you know, um, lists that Eric has to try to maximize, um, you know, participation in the survey. 
and and then I guess the only other thing I would say is I think this is very like, you know, just kind of preliminary in terms of gathering community feedback and hopefully will help give us some direction in terms of um, where to go as we move forward and, you know, the other, you know, figuring out the other design pieces that, that went and then, you know, we'll be followed up with more community outreach um, at that later time that will be more detailed. Yeah, and you are right. We do have an account. I'm going to lean on Robin and Carolyn to help me get all of this kind of actually input and going because uh, they're the ones who utilize that for uh, occasional work purposes. But we do have a, um, a corporate account, I guess, for lack of a better term with them. So uh, we'll be able to kind of collect the data and uh, it kind of pieces it together for you and everything else. So um, obviously, uh, you know, I, I, my, my hope and goal here now uh, that we're really starting to move forward with this is to uh, get this out, you know, maybe shortly before the holidays and then let it run for, you know, at least a couple months, my, my thing into January. Uh, I don't think there's any harm in keeping it out there for a while and trying to get as many responses as we can. And then hopefully, uh, if not by the end of January in that meeting or possibly the February meeting, kind of be able to look at it at which point we can also start uh, you know piecing together uh, proposals uh, you know in the RFP that's going to be a design and build for all of this. I did communicate with the uh, Office of Grants and Local Services earlier uh, last week who did confirm that uh, you know within one application we can apply it to all of the place structures located within Marinwood Park, which is nice because it's one contiguous parcel number. Um, so depending on what you know comes back, my initial thought, and we're getting a little ahead of ourselves beyond this survey, but is you know to put together an RFP that has a uh, additional alternate uh, bid on it um, for looking at potentially the mini park place structure equipment as well. Um, and using the main park as the base bid and then moving around also to an additional uh, alternate uh, if we wanted to add that and depending on how bids come in. I mean, as we've learned, uh, you never know where things come in until things come in. So, uh, but if we can utilize this funding, I'd rather make sure we spend every penny uh, and try to replace all of that play equipment. Uh, once uh, then you know hit this main park which is the much bigger need uh, the mini park uh, supply problems we have with replacement parts and such and it's not quite as aged but i think it could use a nice refresh anyway it's a popular park for the tot set so what um when are we ideally when if just everything kind of goes as we plan it to, when would we be looking to break ground and start the, the project for the play structure? Uh, I'm would, getting ahead yeah. of ourselves. I'm kind of going along with that theme here. <laughs> yeah, no, it, you'd be maybe late 2022, but probably more like early 2023, I would assume, um, you know, having uh, contracts and things in place, ideally by the end of June. Uh, 2022, I think, would be good and give this time to go out and we're going to have to hand feed the uh, request for proposals to the various companies. Um, so and give them time to turn it around and probably have a 45 day turnaround on that. So it will be a uh, we'll see where they come in. But yeah, I, I think we have um, don't quote me on this. I know I put it in past reports, but I think we have until June of uh, 2023 to expend the funds. Got it. Maybe um, even December. Because I was thinking about, um, you know, that that part when you're going down Lucas Valley Road, there's that one area where we see advertisements for different events that are happening at Marinwood. Um, I find that to be a really, really good spot. I mean, my kids even ask me about events coming up and would at, by, by reading it from the car. And I was thinking that might be, that might be a good place to advertise the survey just as an option. You know, something yeah, we have another like new one, year, just new, like year that. new playground, tell us what you think or something like that. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. We could even most likely uh, incorporate like the QR code into it or just a direct web web link. Um, 
so that way you can just hand your kids the phone and they can shoot the QR as you're driving down the road would be great. Um, make sure they stick it out the window. Uh, yeah, and we have, that's a great idea, Lisa. And there's also another one, um, the other entrance to the neighborhood over by Marinwood Market. Um, so both of those are highly high visibility. Um, so I think that would, that's a good idea. Oh, and then I have one more question. I think this, I think this is great. I really like this survey. Um, so, and, and we've got like two quantitative and like three qualitative questions on it. And I think it, I like the simplicity too. Um, I'm wondering for, for question two, um, are we asking people to rate all of them like one, two, three, four, five? And then compile the data that way and sort of a, how many say one for swings, how many say one for monkey bars? Is that the goal? Yeah, that's, that, that's the functionality in SurveyMonkey for that one. That was going to be the idea. I tried to figure out if we could add like another one that's like an other with a place where you could actually write something in, but I couldn't, it didn't, I couldn't figure out that that was doable. So that's why there's the sort of follow-up question on the next one. Yeah. No, but I yeah, think that one would the be sort of a rank. Question. Yeah. No, yeah. I think that you cover all, all of it very, very nicely. So I, um, that's, that's just interesting. I, um, I'll be, I'll be excited to see sort of how the, how it, the data can be compiled by ranking it and kind of what it looks like. So. Yeah, and you do bring up an interesting point, Lisa, you know, it's kind of ranking versus rating, and that if each of them had their own, you know, rate your desire for this feature on a scale of one to five, one being not at all, five being very much, as opposed to tell us which ones of these you like the most, you know, rank these in order of your most uh, desired play structure features. So. That brings up an interesting point. It'll be interesting to keep an eye on it and see how that goes. Uh, um, and obviously, it could be very well uh, jaded if we don't get enough responses to make this statistically significant as well. So um, I can see pros and cons to both. I think everybody just says five, 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 five on everything doesn't tell you anything as opposed to making them actually rank one through five of these features that we're listing. So um, that's an interesting point. Yeah, you may have multiple children and one of them likes swings and the other one likes the monkey bars. So you got to have two fives up there. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I yeah. do think we could do the ranking. That'll be the ranking versus rating. I do think that I'm pretty sure that would be functional in Survey Monkey. So I agree that it's a good suggestion. And I, like Eric says, I guess there's pros and cons for either. but. If there's a if there's a strong sentiment one way or the other, I think we could we could shift it. Just thinking of just the data clarity coming from it, and what would be what would provide more of it. Um, but I think this covers everything that we had discussed about community feedback. I don't see anything that's missing um, from my perspective. The only question I guess comes to my mind would be. Could people possibly be, uh, say, if you're a user of the tot playground on Las Colinas, would they think that that's, you know, that, that we need to kind of identify which playground we're talking about? Or, uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, that brings up a good point. Uh, I can add a little language into this uh, opening paragraph. You know, something like, uh, the play structures within the Marinwood Park uh, near the Marinwood Community Center, or you know something along those lines to make it very clear. Right, you um, could just number one could just kind of run that sentence out to flush that out. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll work on that, uh, John. That's a good point. I had a couple of um, comments. I I really like it. I mean, it's super simple. I think it, that's the way it should be. That makes sense. Um, are we uh, just assuming that the structure we put in will have some ADA accessibility and therefore we're not even, we don't ask about it or talk about it? Because that is that kind of the standard practice for modern playground equipment? Yes, yeah. it, it is very much so the standard practice. Yeah, okay. And then 
I'm also assuming we kind of stick with the same age group that we already have there. I think we've talked about that. And we, we also talked about targeting a survey to the kids specifically. And maybe that's this, or maybe that's something else. Maybe that's like an intercept survey where, you know, a camp counselor or somebody just walks around the playground and, and asks kids what their favorite a piece of equipment is and it does that goes through that process but because this is this is specifically going to the parents correct it is but it does have a you know some of the language in here is you know uh, asking them potentially to fill it out with their children uh, assuming that they have children so we're, we're certainly encouraging them to participate in this activity you know with their kids at the at the same time so yeah no i i um actually going straight to kids on a blind survey like this certainly uh, has its level of concern, but I think, you know, asking parents to do fill this out with their kids is a whole different ball of wax that hopefully leads to some more meaningful uh, and legitimate response. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, I think it looks great. I'm thinking uh, of how- On that last point, John. Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, no, go ahead, Lisa. I'm just, I was trying, like, thinking, like, you know, what the response would be if, some, you know, if an adult was a approaching children at the playground and asking them <laughs> what their, <laughs> what they like the monkey parts or the slides better, um, what the reaction <laughs> might be. I think we'd see some next door posts as a result of that. Yeah, I think we would probably have our staff do something like that if we decide to do something like that. Uh, and we'll put them in a, a Marinwood uh, camp staff shirt. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would, I, I think like even, you know, you've got the, the, the winter camp coming up. I mean, that would be kind of a captive audience to ask questions of, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of, we have a lot of opportunity for that. And uh, not to mention the, I mean, I think to John's point, there is uh, the, every day, I mean, I get here at the nine o'clock hour and there's, there's, people already out in the playground playing. And when I leave at night, there's people in the, you know, the, there's constantly people out there. So there is opportunity. And I think again, uh, hopefully we can capture some of those people by having plenty of signage uh, and advertisement encouraging people to take the survey because a lot of these are nannies or whatever. They're sitting there on their phones. They can easily click a, uh, you know, take a picture of the QR code and bring it right up. So hopefully we can, elicit some response that way. I'll be very curious to see how it comes through just in terms of participating. Yeah, that all sounds right. Eric, at one point you had talked to about like soliciting feedback from camp counselors and folks like that. I don't know if it makes sense to send them the survey or if it just, just do separate outreach to get their sort of collective feedback as, you know, folks who have overseen lots of kids at, at the playground for many hours um yeah and then, i think that that would be a great idea uh ian actually and i think uh, a lot of our staff would be really excited to get an email like that and help out and participate um i would probably establish it as a, even if we use the exact same survey i think i would send them a different link so we can look at those results yeah. separately um and that they don't get mixed in with the larger results of just kind of the larger community as a whole. And then they might be very similar, they might be different, um, but I think I would just establish a, a separate link um, that we only send, you know, just kind of internally to our staff, ask them not to share the link, but to please take this based on uh, your perception of overall kid enjoyment, uh, you know, how long they tend to interact with certain things or what they tend to like the most or any, you know, I think that'd be very interesting. Yep, that sounds good. And then and then just responding to sort of John's thoughts too, which uh, are well taken uh, on the, the sort of outreach to kids point too. I, I mean, I, I'm assuming, I guess we don't know exactly how the whole RFP and, you know, process will play out, but assuming we get a little further along down the line and we have like tangible options in terms of like images that we're actually getting community outreach on, I could see at that point too also figuring out ways to sort of broaden our community engagement to try to, you know, fold in more user groups, including kids. But, um, but I think maybe at this stage, you know, I, I kind of, I, you know, hopefully this is at least the first step.
Yeah, I, I just think that that's going to, we'll just see, you know, what kind of response we can get. And we'll certainly, you know, push this out and we'll do it not only through social media, but we can also send it to, uh, you know, lists of anybody who's ever had, you know, gone to camp here. If they've gone to camp, if their kids have ever done camp here, their kids have played in our playground. Um, you know, so we can really, you know, kind of hit some targeted groups and, uh, you know, push it all throughout our uh social media, not just next door, which is very localized, um, but also, you know, on our Facebook accounts and our Instagram accounts. That, uh, have a, a, from a geographical standpoint, at least a broader reach. Um, because unfortunately, like say with our next door account is really good when I'm trying to communicate district, you know, matters that are specific to the district. But if you live uh, across the street on Lucas, you know, in, in Terra Linda, you don't get to see those. So it's, uh, it'll be, I, I just got to kind of get that right because it's really a localized effort for us. So uh, just pushing it out as much as we can and encouraging people to share with other people that they know have used the playground uh, or visit the playground, it would be important too. And to answer your earlier question, Lisa, I just looked, um, the project needs to be complete by uh, at least in accordance with the grant funding. The project has to be completed by December 2023. So we're still a little over two years away on that. Not to say we're going to stretch this all the way out by uh, end of June uh, of 2022 is when we're supposed to have contracts approved. Um, and once we are, exec are executing contracts for approved projects. Um, so at that point, you know, there'd be no reason to wait a year and a half. Obviously, some of these projects are much larger capital uh, projects that uh, take a lot longer to complete than a simple remove and replace of a play structure equipment. Um, so I would say, you know, ideally, if we have to be in contract by eight months from now, um, there's no reason why 12 months from now we're not wrapping this up, uh, just depending on availability, supply chain, everything else. Uh, and then if we get too far into the rainy season, who knows what next year will look like, then it might have to get pushed to the following spring. Um, but once we're under contract and we have it, we're already under contract. So it's just a matter on availability of the parts uh, and the equipment, um, as well as the weather to get in there and do the work. It'd be nice to do it in a little bit more of an off season time, that's for sure. Of course. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, otherwise, I'll start working with Robin uh, as early as this week uh, to see if we can't get this in, um, get it going. I might, uh, you know, run a, uh, a test sample and uh, if uh, you all are obliged, just send out a, a a trial link to everybody here. Just go through. We'll make sure the data is getting collected. Um, and then uh, after we do that, we can reset it and then push it out to the public, I think would be good. Just, you know, go through, answer the questions, uh, just to make sure we're, we're collecting all of the response properly. Good idea. Good. Any other last thoughts on this before uh, I stamp it? Nope. Excellent. Thank you guys. And thank you, Ian, very much. Your help in getting this up and kind of seeing how it could work within SurveyMonkey and uh, taking the feedback from the last time it was discussed was all very much appreciated. I know uh, time is valuable. And so thank you for your time and helping with it. Thank you. 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 Yeah, one second. You have a comment from Michael. Michael. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, I'm Michael Bennis. I um, am considering joining or applying to join the commission. Um, I came into the meeting a little bit late, so I don't know if this has been covered, but is there any idea about? Um, collecting demographic info on the survey? It might be helpful um, to know who the audience is when you're actually serving people, um, you know, collecting age and if they're in the neighborhood or what the kids' ages are, um, might be something worth considering. 
That is an excellent point. Now I'm wondering uh, how we missed that. Uh, let me work on that. I think some loose demographic info, uh, especially uh, things. Yeah, that's a good point, Michael. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Is that all? That's all. That's all, yeah. Thank you. All right, yeah, that's a that's a great thing to include there. We want to make sure we're building it for the people that live here <laughs> more than that. Yeah, well, when I think of demographic too, I also think of uh, you know age of respondent, um, a number of children in household, um, things like that as well. I don't know. Ian, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, we. I think we, I think I asked about that at that last meeting about whether we wanted to have a question of like, you know, whether people live or Merwood residents or not. And I thought that the consensus was not to include that. I guess that's a little different than some of these other things like age, et cetera. Although I guess I don't know how much of a difference it matters. Like if the, you know, especially if people are asking or filling them out based on their sort of experience watching whether it's their grandkids or whether it's their kids or whatever so i don't know i i i i think there's also a survey thing of like you know the more questions you add the less likely people are to complete it so that's part of been the goal of keeping it simple so i'm not opposed but i guess it does it just sort of like opens the door if you start asking demographic data how many questions do you ask how how relevant is it to the you know to the feedback we're trying to solicit um, and does it like, you know, turn people away or drive down the number of submissions. So I don't know, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I just, those are the thoughts that it triggers. I actually had the same thought, Ian, just once you start asking a lot more questions are we gonna lose people? I think my initial thought looking at the survey was I like the simplicity of it, it was just a couple of quick questions that's like no, uh, wouldn't create too much, I don't know, concern for somebody to fill that out. But um, thinking to Marin County Parks, we, we do collect, I think mostly age, age and race when we do surveys, but those are those are a little bigger surveys. This is just targeted for a you know a playground. So I, I'd go either way, but I, I share Ian's concern there. Yeah, I understand. I, I think some of this demographic info it just seems like something that you kind of see on every survey that you go through. Um, I would be most interested in personally in the age of children in household. Um, because if you can parse that info with the responses, and if they have, you know, young kids versus, uh, you know, nine, 10 year old, then you can say, well, families with young kids, like, you know, swings and slides, um, while families with older kids, like the elevated platforms and the climbing features, or, you know, I think it also then helps you understand that, okay, so for the younger Part, we're looking more at this versus, you know, on the older equipment, you know, where we, because we do kind of keep them separated within that playground area as it is too. It's, uh, you know, the, the, the more climbing, you know, taller slide features over there in the north eastern part of the park are technically uh, intended for older kids too. So let me look, let me see um, if the, if, if it can be fit in there without adding any more than one or maybe two other questions, would there be any opposition to me just kind of putting something in there along those lines? Okay. I think it works. Yeah, but I agree with the overall sentiment that I'm getting from the commission is um, less is more sometimes. So the more simple we can keep this, uh, in the aspect of hoping to elicit more response, the better. Um, so, uh, understood. And I can also put them towards the end because I believe through, even through SurveyMonkey, it does, even if somebody doesn't complete a survey, 
it still collects the data up until that point when they complete it. Um, so let me, uh, and, and Robin can confirm that for me. Um, so I would, I would add those things at the end. And I just think it's a nice way to kind of parse the data a little bit, assuming we get enough data that it's even valid to parse it out. That work? Thumbs up, down? All right, good. Okay, thank you everybody. That's all good feedback. I appreciate it. Um, thank you. All right, now we will uh, move on to item number six. This is the Recreation Park Maintenance Activity Report. Uh, obviously, Mr. Fretwell was not able to join us tonight, but we do have his report. Uh, any comments or anything from commissioners or? Board members? I guess I might start by saying it sounds like you had a, a quite a turnout for your Halloween Harvest Festival. Yeah, I, I think a heck of a lot more than they anticipated. Uh, I unfortunately was out of town that night and I didn't even get to bring my own kids. It sounded like they had a line all night long uh, for it. Uh, they didn't anticipate as much as they got, I think, you know, it's a little bit of everything. We were the first kind of Halloween thing of the local agencies that do that. It was, uh, I think people are chomping at the bit to get out and do fun things right now. The weather was good, although it was windy. Um, but yeah, they, they said it was a line all night long. Uh, they got a lot more people than they possibly anticipated, but you know, got some good lessons. And if they wanted to continue doing it outdoors on how to do that, spread things out a little bit, maybe add a couple more games just to give people more room to do things. So um, yes, it was, it was busy. Do you think your uh, winter fest will draw a large crowd as well? Uh, I don't know. Uh, personally, I think that it, uh, you know, they're trying to do something a little bit uh, different th this year. And the, again, having a lot of it outside, the photos with Santa will kind of be the only thing that people will come in to do. Um, but we're going to have music going outside and they're trying to, you know, figure out how to make sure it can be warm enough. Uh, you know, type ensemble that's played a, uh, the last several years at it they're really good and fun and you know just kind of doing some hot cocoa and some other activities and things like that um so we will see it traditionally yes it is equally busy uh almost as much so as the halloween thing i think halloween everybody's used to getting out and about uh so i am sure that they are anticipating more than they were anticipating before they did the halloween fest Uh, oh, I have a feeling that I have a feeling that it'll be busy too. I just yeah uh, yeah. yeah. Did did Lisa or Ian or John did anybody come to the Halloween thing? I was not in town either, Eric. I was really sad to miss it though because I heard all about it the next day at soccer, and uh -huh. I think everyone on that field was was there and said just what an incredible. Um, event it was it was just everybody it was like everybody was there everyone in the community came out to this and enjoyed it and the kids just had a wonderful time too so I, I I'm really sorry that I missed it but it got a lot of a uh, lot of wonderful reviews for sure good good I, I did hear a little bit of some people frustrated that they kind of were standing in lines for a long time uh but, uh, you know, it is what it uh, is. They were talking with their friends while they were standing in line. So, you know, they yeah. were around other people. Kind of like you mentioned, just chomping at the bit for something in the community to do to bring everyone together and enjoy one another. So I think it served that purpose. I was at the pool with my kids uh, closing down the last day of the pool. And uh, on our way out, we saw um, everything set up and saw all the staff in their costumes and I think the first attendees were just starting to trickle in. So I, I saw how, how well prepared they were, uh, even if they weren't anticipating quite the onslaught. But yeah, it looked like a great event. Good, good. That's a perfect segue, because uh, as you also see, I just 
to reiterate uh, on Luke's behalf, uh, the, the pool season has concluded. October 8th was the last day. Um, uh, they said that they actually had a, a pretty darn good turnout that day. I think a lot of people just kind of getting their their last chance in, especially amongst the lap swimming crowd. Um, uh, so it's uh, good to know they have, you know, just kind of going through our annual preparations of, you know, kind of slowing down the pool. We, uh, we don't turn off the motors or the pumps like they used to do many years ago. Uh, you know, the pool kind of keeps circulating and everything. And that's the one thing about pool equipment. It, it, it likes to keep working, uh, whether people are using the pool or not. But um, obviously the heaters are off. Everything else is off. Um, I, I, when I came by on Sunday, I was about this close to looking like the water was about to overflow from it, but they said that's natural when we get as much rain as we get. So uh, it's already back down to where it's supposed to be and the equipment's doing its, its job. Um, otherwise, uh, on the park side, if there's any questions, um, you know, thankfully those guys did a lot of work going into the weekend, just kind of, you know, going through, checking V ditches, clearing storm drains. We didn't have any uh, real issues that I am aware of. Um, I did hear of a couple of bee ditches that, you know, overran a little bit, uh, but that seemed to be simply due to excess um, and not as much due to uh, any sort of clogging or debris matter. Um, those guys, you know, really were putting in a lot of work getting out there and clearing things out, uh, and making sure that they were ready to go in anticipation of what turned out to be a lot of rain, especially for this time of year. I think I saw it was like the second biggest October storm in a hundred years or something along those lines. So uh, that's good. Um, the tennis court repairs have been completed. Uh, hopefully they have been able to get to all of the irrigation maintenance that they need because it's about the time where we completely shut off all levels of irrigation. So any more of those things come loose, uh, it'll be tough to discover them until the spring. Otherwise, any other questions, I can happy to forward them on or answer them the best I can. I'm just curious, do you think that uh, Newberry Terrace, that was just debris sloughing out of open space into the storm drain? Uh, where are you looking? Uh, 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 right under Parks and Maintenance, uh, Building Maintenance, the storm preparation. Uh, yeah, it, it was just, you know, kind of a low spot and it just kind of looked like natural, uh, you know, I don't really want to use the term erosion. Um, I, I didn't personally go see it. I know they, you know, they brought in some equipment to really get on it, get it cleared out, and make sure that they uh, a little bit more equally and uh, away from the drain. And uh, those ones are relatively tricky that run right behind those houses there because a lot of times people will, will go out there. And, I, you know, we've had to send out some letters in the past and letting people know that, hey, you, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. So sometimes they'll fill them in and, you know, want to plant something there or fill them in because they have a gate from their back gate that, uh, you know, a little path that they walk across and don't want to step over it or whatever the case may be. This one, according to them, looked like it just it was kind of filled with, you know, debris and dirt from over time, but, uh, they cleared it out. That would be a good question to ask Luke. He definitely has more of the uh, firsthand knowledge on it than I do, John. I'm just curious, that's all. Hey, Eric, did you or staff notice any further erosion behind the pump house? No, in fact, it's funny because I went, that was one of the areas I, I went all the way back and checked. Um, you know, the me the measures we have in place, the one immediately behind the pump house is a little bit, uh, you know, just kind of parked off. And when we actually had some uh, some boring samples done there, um, they, you know, they hit what they call bedrock pretty quick and they weren't worried about any, uh, you know, big time erosion issues there. Uh, and the area over by that we had a little thing over closer to the top pool uh, seemed to be holding in fine too. So uh, with this one, and there was a lot of water moving through that creek. It was the first water, so uh, you know it's something that we're going to be keeping an eye on all winter long, especially when we continue to get heavy rains, um, and it just starts pounding on it. But not yet, John. To answer your question, it looked good. Uh, that's good. Yeah, no, that was on my list of out and about.
Uh, any other questions, thoughts, comments, concerns? Oh, I, actually, just on that same note, I mean, I forgot there were we had some field erosion that kind of ate back, and that was the catalyst to put up that fence. Did we have any more? Was there any erosion along the banks, kind of adjacent to the fields? Any of the fields? Not that I have seen, and not that has been reported to me. Um, I where uh, where we did put up that fence, and to be honest with you, I didn't actually climb over through and look at that, mostly because that whole area is still fenced off. Uh, but I, you know, I certainly was looking at a lot of the the creek areas, you know, walking over both the bridges uh, and the other areas. Um, again, I, I I think that's something that my my concern is going to be a little bit as we get further into the winter and uh, as the water keeps moving through the creek and keeps you know uh, pounding on the banks and then especially after the big storms I think for this initial uh, flow even though a lot of water was moving down that creek um, I think we did okay and none of the park guys have come to me to let me know any of that but I that is a good uh, thing I'll follow up on tomorrow with the park staff just to make sure that they've noticed any further erosions uh, in that area as well, John. Thank you. Okay, uh, anything else from commissioners? Then I would ask for any public comment on the uh, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. Looking for public comment, you have none, John. Okay, then we will uh, move on to item number seven. This is uh, commissioner items of interest. Any requests for future agenda items? None for me, thank you. Okay. John, I have a couple of just informational things I want to share, um, not necessarily for discussion. Um, we already talked about the trail study. I uh, just was going to update that that is going out, and I expect to have something, but hopefully by uh, uh, late next month uh, or possibly later. Um, the uh, open space veg management stuff that we all looked at, um, we have filed all of our necessary uh, CEQA documents with that, and I'm actually expecting the work on that to get started uh, the first week of November. That's going to take probably four to five weeks total. Uh, in the main area, there are facilities uh, falling behind the houses all the way until it stretches past uh, to Peachstone Terrace. Um, is the area we're looking at now, and that's going to be kind of a lot of debris cleanup uh, and some crown lifting where applicable, uh, all within that hundred foot zone. Um, and so we're contract out now to do to have that work started. Um, and this company's been doing a lot of work for Santa Fe and some of the other agencies, and they came highly, highly recommended for just doing a very clean, a very thorough, uh, uh, professional and. Uh, uh, careful job with this work. So uh, that's why we wound up going with them. Uh, Eric, who did you say that was? It's a group called m, &M Tree Service. Oh. Um, they've been, I don't know if you're familiar with them. Um, the owner uh, lives locally in Santa Fe. They've been doing a lot of work for the city of Santa Fe lately. Um, and I believe also one of the Southern Marin jurisdictions as well. Um, and I actually got a chance to see some of the work that they've done and it looks really nice. And they're very, they're very thorough. They're very professional. Uh, they understand exactly what it is we're trying to accomplish here. So I, I feel very comfortable moving with that. Um, and then the final thing I wanted to bring up, um, and I'm really kicking myself, I forgot to put it in the agenda just as an informational update for you all. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw, but uh, we have put out uh, announcements for upcoming uh, commission appointment opportunities. Uh, I do want to uh, let you know that at the end of this calendar year, um, Ian Fine's current term, as well as John Campo's current term, will expire. I'll reach out to both of you uh, individually uh, to uh, gauge your interest on wanting to reappoint for a full two-year term. I know Ian hasn't been with us that long, but he actually inherited what was an open uh, an open two-year term that in midterm that does end at the end of this year. Um, 
all of the two-year terms that don't end until 2022 are currently full with Anne and John Toon. And then the other one is just the alternate role has a term end date of 2022 and that still sits empty. Um, and we have put out notices uh, via social media, via next door. Um, I don't know if they went out via our rec mailing lists, um, but I'll probably push that out. And any, uh, we, I've, I've asked any responses come in by November 3rd or to Jennifer November 9th. Did you say, Eric, that there is a list of all of these open positions on the site? Uh, you said next it's door. It's not a list. It's a, it's a, our announcement. You know, I kind of put together, it's just a one page announcement. We've pushed that out on the next door. We've pushed it out. Uh, onto our Facebook page, onto our Instagram page. Um, and that's usually where we get some of our best response. And then, yeah, it should be on our website as well. Cool, thank you. Yep. Eric, if we come back, do we get a raise? Uh, I'll double it. <laughs> Twice as much as I'm paying you now. Uh, you've never used that before, have you? <laughs> uh, yeah, once or twice. Uh, and I'll tell you what, as long as we keep doing uh, these remote meetings, you can help yourself to the fridge during the meetings, John. Wow, you're a guy. You know, uh, I try, I try. Hey, um, one other question. You you said um, the, the veg work, did, did you say it starts in November? Yep. What, how long does that, what's the duration of that? Uh, they're expecting probably four weeks, they, uh, you know, for the scope that we want them to do. Right, okay, thank you. Anything else? All right. I would now, now ask uh, any public comment on item number seven, the uh, items of interest and the request for future agenda items. There's no public comment, John. Well, it's been a quiet night. Um, hearing nothing else, we'll move on to item number eight. Um, Unless someone else has something to say, I would take a motion to adjourn. I move. Al, second. Okay, motion by Fine, second by Campo. Uh, all in favor? Thank you all. Hey, thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time tonight. Uh, Ian,